Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Miss Faye and this is my world. Okay, today's topic is the twin flame. <laughs> the twin flame journey. Okay, before we get started, I want to say welcome. Welcome to the channel. Welcome to all the new viewers. Welcome to all the new subscribers. And welcome to you who have been with me from the beginning. I really appreciate you. And I want to thank you for your comments. And thank you for your letters. Now those of you who are new to the channel, I will answer your relationship questions. So at the end of this video, I'll show you a link where you can send in your questions and I will either answer them through the email or I will answer them on the air. And it will be your decision. Now those of you who are interested in these caps, they are now available in my online store. So just go to the description all the way to the bottom. You'll see a link that says online store. Just click on that link. And there you are. Okay. All right. Let's dive into this topic today. The twin flame journey. Okay. Okay. First, let's define what, what a twin flame is. <laughs> okay. All right. The definition that I have of a twin flame is that uh, your soul decided to divide to divide into two and part of your soul went into another vessel and you went into this vessel okay and you and the purpose of this is you live your life and at some point in your life you find each other again okay all right and then when you come together you can share experiences and you you understand that hopefully you you both have ascended during your journey okay all right now this twin flame is supposed to be your natural soul twin all right uh, when I when I started my spiritual journey I was introduced to the twin flame okay during that time I was asking for true love okay and tr what true love is is that un conditional love. You want somebody to love you for who you are, not what you look like or what, what you're doing or what you have or anything. You want unconditional love. Okay, this is how I started my journey. Okay, when I met the narcissist, my soul knew him. My soul actually knew him. And you know, when you tell people that, it's hard for them to understand, you know, understand that unless you have experienced that in your life. But before I even saw his face, because uh, when we met, um, we decided where we were going to meet and he was already there. And when I walked up on him before he even turned around, my soul knew him. Okay. Just, just like if you, just like if you walk up on uh, your uh, your child, you know I'm anywhere. That's how I knew this 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 person. Okay, I didn't know anything about the, the twin flame journey at that point. Okay, but because I, my soul knew him, I took a lot off of him because of that. You understand? I knew there was a, a strong connection. I was really drawn to him. And, and I didn't know what it was, okay? So then I started searching information about the twin flame because it was just presented out of nowhere. I don't know where it came. I don't know if I saw it uh, on TV or what I saw it, but it was in my psyche, the twin flame. So I started uh, reading about it and doing research about it and everything. Now, from what I understand, the twin flame uh, is 
your other half. Your twin flame is your other half. But the twin flame can bring challenges into your life. Okay? Now, there, <laughs> during my research, I found out that there is such thing as a false twin. Okay, this, this gets confusing. You have a true twin and you have a false twin. And everybody doesn't have this. Okay, just some people. Okay. And I suppose if the twin flame journey has been presented to you in your life, maybe you are on that journey. And that's why it's brought to you. Okay. All right. Now, the false twin, in my understanding... <laughs> Is someone that's like your twin, but he's there definitely to teach you a harsh lesson. It's about healing. The false twin would, would take you down a path for healing. Okay? You know, it, he's going to take you down a path, a hurtful path, because you need some kind of healing. This is my understanding about a false twin. Now, the person that I met that I thought was my twin was actually a narcissist okay the person that I met that I thought was my twin turned out to be a narcissist okay now I believe that person was a false twin okay that person definitely taught me a lesson yeah I healed a lot of my childhood issues through dealing with that false twin. I believe I thought it was my real twin but now I believe it was a false twin because of the hurtful experience that that narcissist took me through. Okay, follow me people. That You know, it's a little confusing. It's spiritual and you know spiritual things, you don't always understand the whole scope of it all at one time with time you can understand really what the purpose of all of this is but the twin flame journey is not an easy thing you see people think that once you find your twin life is going to be beautiful you understand you're going to find your perfect match over here and your life is going to be everything you've ever wanted See, people want to romanticize the whole idea of a twin flame. You know, you find your twin and uh, life is going to be beautiful because this twin is going to be just like you. And you, you understand? But that twin, think about it. That twin is a product of, or, of his or her own environment. That twin has had his or her on experiences in life so that twin probably won't be just like you because of life experiences but maybe at the core they're a lot like you you understand maybe that's it i'm still trying to understand the twin flame journey myself you understand i believe that I met a false twin that I thought in the beginning was my twin. <laughs> okay. Now, I believe you'd be better off with a soulmate rather than a twin. Because, uh, see, your twin, you will be drawn to your twin. You see, and, it, and it, it'll be a bond that's, that will be difficult to break. Dealing with your twin may be difficult be difficult because your twin could probably push all your buttons and your twin may be there just to help you grow maybe that's why your twin comes back to help you grow and that wouldn't be just you know all a happy-go-lucky experience growth many times is painful understand for you to grow you may have to go through a painful experience and your twin may be the one to bring it 
this is the thing about the twin flame you understand it's not always what you think it is you see and a lot of people who believe that they are with their twin flames they're actually with their soulmates a soulmate a soulmate actually can be more fun because the soulmate it's actually someone from your soul family you know you have a lot in common you can have fun together and things like that but your twin could be a mirror image of you and that can cause you some difficulty looking at yourself in the mirror that can cause you a lot of difficulty you may not be ready for that you may not want that you understand you just want to be happy and enjoy your life which tells me you may prefer a soulmate to the twin to the twin now they tell me everybody doesn't have a twin and <clears throat> I guess those that do meet their twins, there's a reason for everything in life. And I believe your twin comes to teach you something. It comes to help you elevate. You understand? He's not coming just to be your perfect partner. I don't think that. I really don't. But I think that may be the job of the soulmate. I think the soulmate come to be your your companion through life you know you have your little difficulties but not like the twin the, I believe that the twin can take you through some very rough times because there's a lesson he came to teach you something that's what I believe the twin came to teach you something to help you to elevate because the twin can get to you where your soulmate maybe can't touch that button because your twin knows you. If the twin is part of you, the twin knows what button to push to make you react. Okay. So that's my that that's my idea about the twin. That's what I believe. Now today's message was prompted by some letters that came in. And uh, uh, here is uh, the first letter. And uh, she says she wants to know about the twin flame. What are they? As I felt I met mine on my spiritual journey, we are separated at this time. Okay. She wants to know about the, the twin flame. And uh, I'm going to tell you. It can be a tough journey. It really can. It's, it's not what you think it is. You see, when people think about twin flames, they think about, you know, you have your partner. Your partner is just like you. And then you're just going to sail off into the sunset and have a wonderful life together. That's not the journey of a twin flame. It really isn't. You see? From what I understand and what I have experienced on this journey is that the person that I believed was my twin flame, but now I believe that person may have been my false twin, if there is such a thing as a false twin, it's a tough experience. These people are here to teach you a lesson. See, your twin is a mirror of you. Okay? And everybody's not ready for that. For somebody to show you yourself. To show you all of your flaws. You'll see it in your twin. And that's a trigger. You see, that's what makes the, the journey difficult. You see? Because you are drawn to your twin. You really want to be with your twin. You see? And it's a it's a spiritual bond. And it's a bond that's hard, you know, understand, to break and to understand. But you're drawn because this is something that is faded. It's something that is meant to be for the time. It's a lesson in it that you you're supposed to learn for your healing. For healing. 
And that I think that's what the twin flame is for. To help you to heal and to elevate. You see? And uh, many people do say that the twin is not there to stay. A lot of times the twin is not with you to, to, to stay with you. And to, you have a happy life together with your twin. No. I believe the twin is there to help you to elevate. You see? The person that I felt was my twin actually kicked me on the spiritual path. You see? Whether he was a twin or a false twin. What I got out of it was that it pushed me toward my spirituality. Because I wanted answers. I, I didn't know what it was. The experience with my twin was that I believe was my twin, but now I'm calling him my false twin. I don't want you to get confused. <laughs> but it was the worst and the best relationship that I've ever had. Okay, I'll say that. It was the worst and the best relationship I've ever had. And actually, it set me on my spiritual path. Being with the the person that I thought was my twin. But as I'm, you know, reading information about the false twin, I said, well, maybe, maybe it was the false twin. It maybe it wasn't the twin. But I'm going to tell you, the reason that I stayed in that situation as long as I did was because I thought we were supposed to be together. You know, I thought this was it. And I put everything I had into it. You see? But it was a lesson. It was a lesson. And it was a blessing. Because the blessing is that now I'm on my spiritual path. And my life is unfolding into happiness. Abundance. Everything I've ever wanted. You understand? So, that's my understanding of, of the twin. And my experience with the twin. You see? So uh, I hope that, you know, kind of, it helps you to understand about this twin flame. You see? This twin is not your happy ever after. Your soulmate could be. But I don't believe the twin is. I believe the twin is your mirror. Reflection. To help you to heal from your wounds. Okay? That's what I believe the twin is there for. So, I hope it helps. And I hope that you understand. This letter is entitled, Should I Give Him a Chance? Okay? I am a 24-year-old high school teacher. And I recently met a guy at a career showcase at my school. He approached me and began a conversation, which was quite good. If I may add, after the showcase ended, he said we should keep in touch and gave me his business card, to which I realized he owns a cafe. I politely took the card, but I didn't reach out because I have a tr I have traditional values about not pursuing men. Good for you. Good for you. About a week later, he sent one of my colleagues at work a message to tell me hello. They are best friends. From then, his best friend shared our numbers and we began messaging each other. I met up with him at his cafe about two weeks ago, an afternoon after work. He was a complete gentleman. And in fact, we ended up chatting even after the cafe had closed for business. However, he's in his mid-30s. Should I give it a shot or no? Yeah, give it a shot. Why not? Why not? I, I I don't see any red flags. Just don't sleep with him. 
Don't sleep with him. Take your time with him. Take your time to get to know him. Take it slow. You see? But but be very observant about everything he does, everything he says. And again, do not sleep with him. Don't do that. Okay? Because remember, that's what men have on their mind. You see? Get to know him first. <clears throat> you see? Get to know him and give him an opportunity to know you. Now, when he finds out that you're not going to sleep with him, if he is truly interested in you, and he must be since he approached you, then he will, he will wait. And he will continue to date you. you. Understand? Because that means he's truly interested. Now, if he drops you when he finds out you're not going to sleep with him, let it go. He was not the right one for you. You see, that's how you navigate this. Okay? Alright? So, I hope that you understand. I hope you understand that message. And I really hope it helps. But yeah, give it a shot. I don't see any reason why you shouldn't. Just take your time with it. That's all. Okay? Let's look at another letter here. Alright. This one is entitled, Am I the wife, maid, roommate, or the slave? Okay. I have been cooking for my husband for 36 years. I am 60 and he is 61. I actually don't mind doing it. I cook and then I clean the kitchen. I have a dishwasher, but I want a new one. I asked my husband to wash the dishes and he says, use the dishwasher. I explained that I don't want to use the dishwasher as it does not work well. I will purchase a new one as I do work and have money the problem is that he is the provider. I feel my husband should want to get me a dishwasher and spend his money for it. Yeah, I would feel that way too. But did you, did you ask him? Did you say, listen, I need for you to go out and buy another dishwasher. This one is broken. Did you actually say that? You didn't say it here in the letter. Your husband, he can't read your mind. Okay. I also want him to give me a foot or a leg massage. He does not want to do it. A few times he has done it, but there was no feeling of love. He does not seem to provide for me. He takes care of things around the house and the yard and brags about it. Nothing for me, his wife. Okay, well, uh, you've been married to him for 36 years. I would say he's already settled in to what he's going to be and what he's doing for you. Okay, now you don't seem to be satisfied with it. After 36 years? Okay, here we go. I snore, and he gets angry and demonic when the snoring keeps him awake. It's all about him getting his rest. Our marriage is all about him being happy. He does buy me gifts for birthdays and holidays, although we have been married 36 years. He is not someone I can confide in or trust. After 36 years, you don't feel like you can confide in him or even trust him? Mm. This is because I don't feel the love and feel used. I just don't feel the provide and protection of the three Ps. I try to spend time on myself and do things I enjoy. What would you do? And am I the wife maid, roommate, or slave? <laughs> it sounds like you're all three. 
to me. It sounds like you're all three. You understand? And, you know, you're not the only one. It's a lot of women in the same situation. Because, you know, you got married. You settled in. And here you go, 36 years, 40 years, 50 years out. And you, and you feel like you've been shorted. <laughs> you've turned into the maid. You've turned into the slave. You've turned into the roommate. You understand? It happens. It happens, ladies. Because, listen, this is the life you have created for yourself. Whatever your husband did, you conform to it. You conform to it. Now you feel like you're being used. And you are. You are. But this is what your partner has settled for. Now, I'm sure your question is, how can you turn it around? This is what I would say. I don't think your partner is going to change. It's been too long. You've been doing it. <laughs> Whatever you've been doing, you've been doing it. You've been complying too long. You see? Now, you can talk to your partner and tell him things that you would like for him to do. I wouldn't talk about the things that he's not doing. What I would do is approach him about the things that you would like for him to do. If you want a dishwasher, just go and say, listen, I would like for you to go and buy me another dishwasher because this one doesn't work anymore. Just be plain. And just tell him. You understand? And don't even mention anything about your, your money. Now, if you use your money, if he, if he says, no, I'm not going to do it, then you're going to do it. Because you're the one that, that is using a dishwasher or whatever. So go on and do it. I mean, I don't believe that you're wanting to break up your marriage over these things. A dishwasher and getting your legs done. I, I don't believe that you want to break up your marriage over this. You just would like things to change a bit. And <laughs> I think it's going to be a little difficult to do that because you settle for this kind of treatment for so long. You can try little things, you know, to get your husband to do. You know, when he's laying up there on the couch, go over there and just lay your legs up on him and ask him to rub them. Now, I'm going to tell you something about that. When I was with my last uh, relationship, who was a narcissist and could be extremely cruel, you know, uh, I would lay my leg up on him and ask him, please, to rub my leg because I do have, you know, some problems with my leg sometimes. And what he would do, he would grab it and squeeze it and try to hurt me because he didn't want to do it. You understand? And I would end up saying, oh, but that's okay. Forget it. Now, if your husband is treating you like that, you know, you go online. Go online and find yourself a leg massager. And don't worry, don't worry about him anymore. Don't worry about him anymore. You're looking for him to show love in a way that... that <laughs> Maybe he, maybe that's not his love language. Maybe his love language is something else. He shows love to you in a different way. I don't know. I'm not in your relationship. I, I don't know the situation. But it's lasted for 36 years. And you know that in itself is something. Something. It really is. So um, what I say to you. Instead of trying to change him. Or instead of, you know, being upset because he won't comply, satisfy yourself. Okay? This is my advice to you. Find what makes yourself happy. And don't worry about him. Because at this point in your life, you can't change him. And he's not going to change unless he decides he wants to change. But, 
You can change yourself and you can change the way that you react around him. You see? Love yourself and don't worry about him. Okay? Whatever you have been doing for 36 years to keep this relationship together, apparently something is working. It's just some things you would like for him to do that he's not doing. You can ask him, but if he doesn't comply, you can't change him. And so, if you're able to do it, you do it. The basic and the main thing in this is for you to find your own happiness and to be happy. Okay? Okay? Honestly, I think it's, it's a little late in the day. For you to be worrying about whether he's measuring up to the three P's if he hasn't done it in 36 years. Okay? Don't worry about it. Make yourself happy at this point. Okay? All right. Now, ladies, um, today's video was about the twin flame. The twin flame. And uh, those of you who are on a spiritual journey you may come in contact with this language. I did when I started my spiritual journey, the twin flame. But I find that the twin flame can be challenging. And you may not want to meet your twin flame. You, you may not want to meet him. You understand? What you want is to be happy. And you may find that happiness in a soulmate. You see? The soulmate will be on your same page. The soulmate will be in your soul family, which means that you'll have a lot of things in common. But your soulmate won't be a mirror to you. And your twin will. And see, that mirroring effect can be very challenging. To see yourself and all of your flaws in the twin. You follow me? The twin is your mirror. You might not want your twin. You might not be ready for that kind of challenge. You understand? Be happy with a soulmate. A soulmate can be fun and you can have a happy life with your soulmate. Where your twin can be a challenge. Okay? Ladies, I hope that you understand this message today, and I really hope that it helps you. Follow your peace toward your happiness. Now, those of you who have questions that you would like for me to answer, here is the link. Send your questions to MissFaysWorld at Hotmail.com. That's MissFaysWorld at Hotmail.com. And if you prefer that I answer your question through the email, just write it at the top of your letter. Okay? Please reply through the email. And this way it won't be overlooked. Now try to keep your letters to one page. Just summarize your situation and ask the question. Alright? So I want to thank you for supporting this channel. I want to thank you for your comments, and I want to thank you for your letters, and I want to thank those that leave a donation. I appreciate you all so very much. I wish you all well, and I hope to see you next time.